not another black person will die because of our ignorance and our inability to value the life force that is the black man. Today, I want every black man that's standing in this crowd to know I am here for you. What is it that we are here for? We are not here for a block party. We are here because the death of George Floyd awoke something in us that's been awakened black people since the jump. So when you come into this space, understand that you are now walking in holy land. This is spiritual. This is an opportunity for us to develop and grow. I'm not concerned about whether they get this precinct back or this street back. I'm not looking for what's theirs, I'm looking for what's ours, and we've given our demand. Today I'm not taking any more news from press, because a lot of y'all niggas has pissed me off, trying to tw twist my message, spin my message. I'm here for my people. I'm here for my people. And if we are all here under the same oath, then we understand what needs to happen. What do we do today? We prepare to mobilize some of those tents in the back of Cal Anderson because effective immediately we now have all of that. That back road behind there, ours. That's now ours. So I would absolutely appreciate if I could get some car barricade happening in that back area. Come ready to talk to each other and to come up with solutions. But more important than anything, come ready to listen to black, indigenous people People of color specifically need you to hear us. This People's Assembly might happen every day. It is still up to debate if this is going to be a functional tool for us to organize. You know, we're here, we're here to, to stop, stop you know, stop the, uh, the police, you know, defund the police, you know, we're here to, you know, stop racism, you know, in general, and we're trying to spread that message, you know, so far we've, we've spread that mo message to the, uh, to, you know, the best we can, you know, we're getting heard all the way from over here to New York, you know, and that's, and that's a lot to say, you know, but, you know, like everything is, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, nothing is done in one day, you know, it takes time. So I'm not homeless. Yeah. yeah. Keys are being passed around. Money's being donated. People are getting out to the streets. People are getting healthy. And we're gonna keep the peace. Medic station that's it's just steadily flourished uh, since enforcement has been gone uh, throughout the day. With that being the case, there's been it's turned into somewhat of a street festival. There is misinformation on what was actually going on in the city. Um, I think the worst of it was from Fox News, who illustrated this as looters, rioters, uh, were extorting nearby residences and businesses, and uh, we're we are terrorists we are domestic terrorists and just all sorts of outlandish stuff but when people are able to come and see what's going on then you see very different story and by that people are constantly showing this and documented it on social media taking pictures and giving statements and the more and more that it's become apparent that they were lies the initial statements about what's actually going on here the more it's flourished and the more interest that's become uh, we are here to try to end po police brutality. We're here to have a say for people not being oppressed, not having social injustices happening to them. Uh, we're here trying to reallocate funds towards those, towards those goals. 
uh, to social services, community services, nonprofit organizations, homelessness, education. There's a bunch of different numbers and avenues, which is a microcosm of what's happened with the No Cop Co-op and being able to have all these donations and anybody that needs something, they're able to receive it. It's not about specific peoples. This is a Black Lives Matter movement. But yes, all people do matter. All people do deserve respect in the same equal ground in which to have with other people who are in power, which is predominantly the white male in this nation. Um, but we're trying to serve the entire community. So yes, come and get whatever you need that will be able to get you through. But at the same time, don't forget that this is about a protest and a movement, which is specifically towards black people for Black Lives Matter. Maybe some more people with this, uh, I haven't seen. general strike where police used intimidation tactics, commissioning over 600 new police officers, setting up machine gun stations throughout downtown, or the 1938 Hilo massacre where police used violence to break a months long strike at an event where children were present. More recently, community has done a great job of documenting all the ways that SPD has actively agitated and harmed pro protesters here in Seattle. All right, so uh, our next speaker is uh, Cristina Lopez with Team Tours. 763, please welcome Cristina. My name is Cristina Lopez, speaking on behalf of the Freedom Socialist Party. I am proud to be a Teamsters Local 763 member. The union represents me as a city worker at the municipal court to represent our interest and our well-being. I am also here as a woman of color and as a labor union activist to say black lives matter and the police guild has no place in the labor movement. This is not about individual police officers who may be your neighbor, your friend, relative, or member of the community who may or may not be friendly working class folks. This police force was created out of the slave patrols that were used to control African Americans under slavery. These pellet pounding law enforcement goons were also used to get rid of Native Americans and forcibly remove them from their lands. The city council's move to ban police from using tear gas and pepper spray is a right step in the right direction. But under this cruel system, a more radical reform is needed. An elected community review board that is independent of the political establishment that has the power to fire the cops and also set police policies such as demilitarization, disarming, and no chemical weapons. Kids in black communities don't have the same resources as a kid that grew up in Bellevue or Redmond. Facts, and that's facts. So that kid that grew up in Rainer Beach area that goes to Rainer Beach High School whose budget is basically a stimulus check for their whole entire school, you know what I'm saying? That kid that grows up, that, that went to that school probably didn't learn much, so he dropped out, joined the streets, got into the streets, ended up going to prison. But see, that's, that's the way the system was designed to make it so. Because if you have that education to prison pipeline, then you have slavery still. You still have slavery. Because according to the 13th Amendment, no person can be an indentured slave or slavery cannot exist unless being punished by a crime. Police have a job. <laughs> Their job is to protect property. Who owns property? Not the working class. Yeah. And this isn't about good or bad cops. This is about bad laws. This is about a bad system that even good cops, if there are any, have to enforce. Because if there are any ethical and honorable cops, there might be, they will absolutely be part of whatever system we make next.
rebellion that we are seeing nationwide and globally is truly a historic moment and a turning point. And look at what's happened in Seattle already. You cannot have capitalism without racism. So if you want to end racism, we are going to have to fight like hell to win the reform, but we have to fight to end the system of capitalism itself and fight and fight for a world. Fight for a world that is based on equality. And that would be a socialist world. And that can only begin when the working class as a whole fights to take democratic public control over the major corporations because when you don't own the wealth, you don't own the power. So let's fight. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No racist. No peace.